Morning Child by Gardner Dozois, Omni, January 1984. Salvador by Lucia Shepard, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, April 1984. Sunken Gardens by Bruce Sterling, Omni, June 1984. And the winner is... begin with a very special award and I would like Paul Wilson to introduce this. Well we want to or, um, honor a very special couple in the audience tonight and before I uh, ask them to come up here I just want to uh, say a few words about them. Uh, they were in publishing before most of us were born um, I've long been intimate with their books. Uh, I have bought every science fiction book they published. <laughs> Not that way. No, Not that way. <laughs> <laughs> All sorts of kinks come out up here. <laughs> but I didn't know what was going on behind the scenes when they were publishing. Oh. So uh, I asked a few people who should know, like David Hartwell. And there he is. And I looked him up in uh, The Way the Future Was by Frederick Cole. And I learned that uh, he was, he did the publishing and he gained a reputation as a publisher who couldn't help seeing the author's side of it. And back in the early 50s when they started the firm that still bears a name, every paperback company was paying 4% royalty to its authors. He decided to pay eight. Other mass market publishers were buying up original paperbacks or uh, reprint rights to hardcovers. And uh, he decided to try the unheard heard of thing of simultaneous publication of a hardcover and softcover. This allowed his uh, authors to get into libraries who turned up their noses at hardcovers then. Softcovers. Uh, Softcovers then. <laughs> and to be reviewed in places that uh, did the same thing and st still do it as we all know. Um, every other paperback publisher at the time was playing it safe with westerns and bestseller reprints. He, he and she decided to uh, take a chance on a bastard uh, field called science fiction and they actually established the first science fiction line. And uh, they even pr published a statement of intent and I have a few sentences from it to provide a series of books of the highest quality, both by established writers and the best newcomers. The finest books in the field, the good writers of science fiction deserve a large scale medium on which they can depend for the opportunity for full and serious expression. A medium anxious to encourage consistently the best of which they are capable. Now he, uh, she, on the other hand, she had the task of fulfilling this pledge. <laughs> nice to give it to the women, you know, we got the ideas and they have to do the work. But she edited the line and she published some little works like uh, Case of Conscience by James Blish, Ray Bradbury's Fahrenheit 451, Arthur C. Clarke's Childhood End, The Space Merchants by Frederick Pohl and C.M. Kornbluth, More Than Human by Theodore Sturgeon, Gore Vidal's Messiah. Well, nobody's perfect. <laughs> uh, just about everything John Wyndham wrote. And she also obtained major works from the likes of Poole Anderson, Anthony Boucher, Algis Budrys, Hal Clement, Philip Jose Farmer, Henry Kuttner and C.L. Moore, Robert Sheckley, Jack Vance, Richard Wilson, many others. Fantasy wasn't neglected either. There were horror anthologies like uh, Graveyard Reader, Deals with the Devil, and who can forget Zachary's Midnight Snacks, <laughs> Zachary's Vulture Stew. We have that for dinner. Right. <laughs> <laughs> a 
I was pigeon. <laughs> no, but really, that was where most of us first met uh, Beers, Collier, Nunsany, Le Fanu, and Lovecraft. But they lived up to their pledge, and you could always count on their SF to tickle your sense of wonder. Uh, but many publishers did that, and that wasn't what made their line unique. They published an incredible variety of SF, ranging from the deadly serious to wild satire. Yet no matter what its tone is, their SF never failed to engage the intellect. And, uh, thank you, Charlie. <laughs> I spelled Wilson, by the way, Charlie. <laughs> so we got together at SFWA and we decided we were, that it was, we were long overdue in uh, recognizing them. Um, it's not a Grand Master Award, although they are uh, Grand Masters in their field. Um, and they received uh, numerous awards from all sorts of publishing groups. But this one really counts. This is from us, the writers, and this one's from the heart. And it reads, in grateful appreciation for decades of devotion and countless contributions to the fields of science fiction and fantasy. And if you don't know who they are by now, you're at the wrong banquet. <laughs> Ian and Betty Ballantyne. a very remarkable occasion for both Ian and myself. And I really don't have any cogent remarks to make, except that I was a child publisher. <laughs> thank, you. Oh, thank, you. thank you, Paul. Now, Paul Wilson is about to disappear to organize the SFWA Sweet Bar, and that's something that he should not be prevented from doing. <laughs> but, but, wait a moment. Before he does that, I just want to point out to all of you that Paul organized this whole thing tonight, and I would just like to thank him from all of us for everything he did. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> get, get plenty of ice, would you? <laughs> now we move on to the, the annual Nebula Awards, and what I'm going to do there is uh, introduce four people, one for each category, who will uh, describe the award in that category. First of all, I'd like to call on Jack Dan, who will talk about the Nebula Award for short story. Where is he? Um, there he is. Come up, right. Yeah. yeah, if somebody's not here, please let me know. Well, Jeannie, I finally got up here. <laughs> the nominees for short story are The Aliens Who Knew I Mean Everything by George Alec Effinger from the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, October 1984. Hello, Ben. Hello. A Cabin on the Coast by Gene Wolfe, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, February 1984. The Eichmann Variations by George Zabrowski, Light Years and Dark, Berkeley. Morning Child by Gardner Dozois, Omni, January 1984. Salvador by Lucia Shepard, the magazine of fantasy and science fiction, April 1984. Sunken Gardens by Bruce Sterling, Omni, June 1984. And the winner is, this is very hard to read. <laughs> Gardner Dozois, <laughs> You uh, have to be a lot smaller than I've become to get up here easily tonight. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> he made it. I'd like to thank uh, my, first of all, my editor, Ellen Datlow from Omni. I'd like to thank, uh, I'd like to thank several thousand other people here, but uh, I'll keep it down to a short list. I'd like to thank the people who have given me the most support over the years, uh, Susan Casper, Jack Dan, Michael Swanwick, uh, Virginia Kidd, Dave Hartwell, and there are lots more I should name, but I just don't have time. I'd like to thank you all very much, one and all. Thank you very much.
Yeah, at the business meeting this morning, we agreed on a special procedure for people who win two in a row, Gardner. <laughs> now I'd like to ask Charles Grant to introduce the novelette, Katrina. Where is he? There he is. Come on, Charles. Oh boy, am I glad I don't have to do this anymore. <laughs> My God, look at that little uh, Nominees for Novelette. Bad Medicine by Jack Dan. Blood Child by Octavia E. Butler. The Lucky Strike by Kim Stanley Robinson. The Man Who Painted the Dragon... Whatever. It is Whatever. <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> Lucius Shepard again. St. Therese of the Aliens by James Patrick Kelly and Trojan Horse by Michael Swanwick. And the winner is Blood Child, Octavia Butler. Um, I'd like to thank especially my editor, um, Shauna McCarthy, who has uh -huh. some uh -huh. good suggestions and questions. <laughs> and um, something else. This is this is really nice. This is beautiful. Oh, I um, I have a thing to thank. I, I have two phobias really. One is speaking in public. <laughs> and the other is small, harmless, wormy things that <laughs> totally disgust me. <laughs> and this second phobia has caused me embarrassment, annoyance, even danger because of my reactions to uh, things like that. This is the first time it's ever done me any good. <laughs> and I'm so pleased. Thank you. We handle a speaking in public problem. Come next year and we'll deal with a small, horrible woman. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But, the, the more astute members among us have probably realized that we're proceeding in order to increasing story length. You, you didn't, you guessed, right? So now I would like to ask Larry Irvin, who I know is sitting right there, if he would please cover the novella category for us. can't wait for best trilogy. <laughs> <laughs> the contenders for the novella uh, award are The Greening of Bed Stuy by Frederick Poole from the magazine of fantasy and science fiction in July. Uh, Mero Death by Michael Swanwick from Isaac Asimov of Science Fiction magazine mid-December. Press Enter by John Varley from Isaac Asimov of Science Fiction magazine uh, May. A Traveler's Tale by Lucius Shepard from Isaac Asimov Science Fiction Magazine, July 1984. Trinity by Nancy Cress from Isaac Asimov Science Fiction Magazine, <laughs> October. And Young Dr. Esther Hazy by Avram Davidson from Amazing, November. The winner is Press Enter by John Varley. Well, this feels like a, a great accomplishment. Uh, the best is to win the award, but the second was not to know that I had won it. So, 
as you may know, a lot of rumors circulate around. As, uh, the rumor I heard was that I had not won, so I didn't prepare any, prepare any remarks. <coughs> uh, I want to thank Shauna McCarthy uh, for buying the story. When I told her I didn't think it was right for Asimov, she convinced me that uh, I was wrong. Uh, thank you all. Thank you so much. Yeah. I really believe that because people who don't own advance don't have shaking hands, which is very interesting. <laughs> Finally, the no trilogies this year, Larry. Finally, the award for best novel. I'd like to ask Frederick Pohl if he would uh, cover that for us. Thank you. I've just been given orders by the stage manager how to do this. I think I'll do it my own way anyhow. <laughs> what I propose to do is first I'm going to read the nominees. They are Frontera by Lewis Shiner, published by Bain Books. The Integral Trees by Larry Niven, published by Del Rey Books. Joe by Robert A. Robert A. Heinlein, published by Del Rey Books. The Man Who Melted by Jack Dan, published by Blue Jay Books. Necromancer by William Gibson, published by Ace Books, and The Wild Shore by Kim Stanley Robinson, Ace Books. Now, if you'll present your sealed bids, I will tell you. <laughs> the winner is Necromancer by William Gibson. <laughs> Okay, um, thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to thank a few of the people who were involved in getting me to write this thing. And um, I'd like to thank Beth Meacham, who was my editor. I do that. I'd like to I'd like to thank Martha Millard, my agent, and I'd like to. I'd like to thank Terry Carr for suggesting to me that I write Necromancer. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Uh, people like photographs of the four winners after we finish, so if you'd hang around and come up here. The only thing I want to say is that it's great to win an award it's not so great to be a finalist and lose, but the rest of us didn't even get on the final list. Uh, um, look how cheerful we are, okay? Uh, more to the point, folks, there's always next year. So on that, I want to close down the banquet and start the party, which is up in the surface suite. Excuse me, Mr. Daly, I yes. introduce you to my father, Mr. Esma. Doctor, it's a great doctor. Question. This is Brian Daly. How do you doing? Know? I'm fine. How's what's what's the name of the what's you may call me Seco. Seco, how do you As spell it? As in Seco, and ye shall find out. Oh, okay, good. S I C O. S I C O. I wonder if that means he's a sicko. It depends on my programming. That's true. It's never the fault of the robot. It's always the fault of the program. As you have said, my friends, and it really works for me. It always has. Doctor, how's your waltzing? Pardon me? Your waltzing. How good are you at waltzing? At waltzing? I'm not very good at all. Why? Well, perhaps that I could assist you. Please stand on my platform and hold my shoulders. Okay. Are you prepared? I'm pre I don't know if I am, but... I'm Some enchanted evening. <laughs> You may meet a robot. Stand by. I will energize hyperdrive. One, a two, one, Holy two. Was it 
good for you too? <laughs> oh boy. Check it out. Oh my goodness. Would you be mine? Absolutely, absolutely. You are the stuff that I am made of. <laughs> Is he buying any of this? Oh, of course I am. My dear friend, may I say what an honor it is to conform to your wonderful rules. You are an inspiration to robots and humans alike. It is through your fine work, my friend, that I am allowed to exist. Oh, I, I was born in the imagination of a human. I can listen to this forever. <laughs> I've been wasting my time with girls. Now we're talking. Oh. But listen, these rules of robotics, you know, a robot's got to be home by 11 o'clock. Robot's got to wash his batteries every day. Robot can't date humans. This is all wrong. Well, tell you what, let's go somewhere we can be private and discuss it, if you know what I mean. Would this guy take advantage of a robot? He's never been before. I would love every minute. Like a shot, the only thing that that saves you from me is the fact that you're a baritone. We can adjust that, you know. I do have a pitch transposer available. Oh, really? I'm a lecturer, you'll know, that makes me ACDC. Oh, well, come at me, come at me with soprano and let's discuss. I do declare, I think we love you. Thank you, my friend. What a tremendous honor this is. Oh, that's all right. After all, I always look for new experiences. Just be gentle and don't hurt me. Listen, there's a first time for everything. If you're lucky, I'll show you my extra attachments. Oh. My friend, do you think I can have your autograph? You can sign it right here in my hands. Well, I can try anyway. Let's see. Oh, wait a minute. I have something in my hand right here. Oh, so you have. Shall I take it? Please remove. Whoops. Uh-oh. Got it. Thank you, my friend. To Seiko. With love, I hope. Sure. With newfound love. <laughs> this is a dream come true for me. That's what every young lady says. <laughs> I could give you yours, but I'm afraid I would damage your body area by placing tire marks on you. It would be worth it. I finally meet a robot. What do I do? I talk dirty. It's okay. I won't tell your wife. If she expects it. Got it. Thank you. Oh, great one. Oh, my pleasure. I had trouble the galaxies near and far. But now that I have met you, I have finally touched a star. So, and remember, when you, tell, when you tell others of this, and you will, <laughs> you better believe it. Because. Do it again. Yeah, it'll start as a 